There are many methods for collecting and storing aquatic insects. This is a way that I have found that is very easy to pack and store with me on the river and to deploy without too much of a hassle. It is important to note that the coloration of many aquatic insects will fade over time when preserved in certain substances. The embalming fluid that I use is the best that I have found, however, many species of caddis still fade or completely lose their color over time. These are the tools that I like to use. On the left, I have a fine mesh net. In the middle, glass two dram vials, and on the right, a simple bubble mailing package envelope. Here's the bug balmer that I like to use. There are many brands and many types out on the market. The only thing I recommend is making sure that whatever you use does not contain formaldehyde, which can be very dangerous to work with. As I said in the beginning of this video, I like this method to be easy to pack with me on the river and also quick and convenient to use while I'm fishing. For this reason, I like to fill the vials while I'm at home. You'll see me fill this first vial up to the very top. That's because I use this vial to top off the others after they have insects in them. The next three vials that I'll take with me, I will fill up to varying heights for different sizes of bugs. And any space that is left over, I will simply top off with this first vial. Once the lids are securely tightened, I'll put them inside this bubble mailer. I find it a perfect way to store them while on the river, and I'm yet to have one break while inside it. There are many methods for actually capturing the insects, the cheapest of which is probably to use a small green aquarium net. My preferred method, however, is to use what's called a net seam. This is a simple mesh net with an elastic band that stretches around my fishing net, allowing me to deploy it with ease. Before I start looking under rocks, I like to check the water column to see if anything is getting dislodged or beginning to hatch. This is done just by simply putting the net in the water, letting it sit for a little while, and then checking it. On this particular trip, I got nothing, just little pieces of plants and rocks. Next we'll see what's under the rocks. I'll place the net back in the water, place my foot just in front of it, and kick around a little bit, churning up whatever's on the bottom to get kicked up and put into the net. It is important to note that some river systems are fragile, and we don't want to cause any harm to insect populations. This river that I'm on right now is a very strong one however, and anything I kick up that doesn't get caught in the net will simply become trout food. Here you can see several species of stonefly, caddis, and some mayflies. A lot of these I already have in my personal bug collection. Here's a golden stone from our local watershed. Here's a larger stone fly, and when the time is right, this guy should become a salmon fly. Notice how as a defense he curls up for protection? These are all important things to remember when tying your own flies. In this catch I happened across a caddis that I didn't have in my collection, and I put him into one of my specimen vials. I normally would top it off after putting them in, but since I'm out on the river and it's cold, I'll wait till I'm off the water and I'm not afraid of dropping anything. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.